Have you ever had somebody tell you, just relax on your forehand or your backhand, that's all you need to do to get more power in your stroke. And you try to relax, but it doesn't really make sense. It's one of those vague things. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to relax using your forehand or your backhand so you can get more power. And the reason this is so important is because when you are stiff in the wrist, you actually take power away. Now, some coaches might say there's a wrong way or a right way to hit the ball, and I just don't believe that. I believe there's more efficient ways and less efficient ways, but even with that, you can still win. So don't let it, don't get paranoid here. We're like, I have to swing this way, and if I can, I can't play tennis. That's baloney. If you can learn how to do this, this is gonna make your forehand and backhand more efficient. And so the first idea I want you to wrap your head around is your swing with a hinge. Your swing with a hinge. And what I mean by hinge is a door hinge. So if my this was like a wall and this my racket was a door, I'm just turning the hinge back. And this is why it's so important. We all see what we call this locked in position with the wrist. Generally, this means when the wrist gets in a very flexed position versus extended position. And so what happens is when you see pros swing, the racket's in their hand and they start swinging and the racket goes to this flex position. Even in the past, I've had players where I said, okay, let's just start with this and they get them here. The problem with that is that, man, they, they got the ball in, but they're still just a little stiff. And it's just understanding that when we start swinging the hand forward, and I mean the hand, not the racket, the hand forward, if we're relaxed, the weight of the head is gonna lag, okay? We're not getting into lag yet, but it's gonna lag behind. So if you just take your racket just like this and hold it with your two fingers, even if you hold it probably pretty tight, which I don't want you to do, and you move your hand forward, look what happens to the racket. You see how for that split second as my hand goes forward, the racket stays behind, and I'm not making this happen. As I swing, it goes behind. And so we wanna take that same effect because what's gonna happen is when my hand starts going forward, it puts my wrist, if I'm relaxed, that key word, if I'm relaxed, it puts me into this extended position, which is a much more secure position at contact versus what a lot of recreational players, when they first start off, if you've ever heard, like starting that T or position like this, and what happens is the wrist is almost like in a neutral straight position. So it puts all the onus of, dealing with the, com the impact onto the wrist and strengthening it. And you see players like getting really tight like this compared to having it where if you relax using the hinge analogy here where the racket stays back, it locks in by itself. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to make any special effort. So you get a ball or you can hit a ball where now you have so much racket at speed versus locking down and that lockdown isn't I would say incorrect, it's just not as efficient. And so what happens when you lock down, you have tension here, which translates to tension here and more tension here. So as I'm using my body properly, my arm is gonna slow down because it's tight. And that's why you're lacking power in your forehand. So the very first thing we wanna do is just understand the hinge. And what I mean by understanding the hinge is go ahead and pinch your racket with two fingers and just start off swinging like this a little bit. Feel yourself where the racket it's lagging behind, and it's just because it's slipping through the fingers. I want you to keep the action of the racket in mind. Now, we're gonna actually work on the wrist, and you're gonna need something, whether it be a basket, you can do this on the uh, uh, edge of a fence, or any stable uh, surface, or sorry, not surface, but object. What I really think, though, is a basket is a, a kind of a really good deal. Normally, I would not have this basket full of balls. So what I want you to do is actually do the wrong thing so we can learn how to do what the right thing feels like. We're gonna have a lot of tension here. My wrist is gonna be in that neutral position that we're trying to avoid. And what I'm gonna have you do is lock everything down and try to push the basket. In this sense, there's a ton of balls in this basket. I wouldn't recommend this. Maybe have it in something where there's not a lot of balls if you have a basket that rolls. If you have a stationary object, that's fine too. Just press on it a little bit. And you can see I'm moving, I'm moving the basket just subtly. From here, what I want you to do is now, if that was a 10, as far as tension and keeping this all locked down, I want you to go to one. And so what should happen, if I go to one of relaxation here, my wrist should break or really not break, but it's gonna go into an extended mode and the head's gonna be left behind. As I keep pulling, the racket then comes forward. Now, what I want you to understand is this. We're not looking for this to go behind, the head to go behind, and the racket to go forward into the ball. We don't want that. We actually want where, as we're pulling, this is when we're making contact, and then after we make contact, then the racket can go forward. Small timing difference, big difference in result. And so what we wanna do is now go to that one. And that one is just letting you, starting to allow your wrist to now relax here and let that racket head go behind. You might have to train this for a while just to get this feeling of relaxing the wrist and letting the hinge work. From here, the next drill I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna start closing my racket face. And this is gonna be different for everybody. I have a semi-Western grip, so I'm gonna to tend to want my racket face 
pretty down. If you have an Eastern grip, it still probably might be down, but not as much. Don't get caught up in the angle of it having to be down, just close it. So when you're coming up, it's not gonna be completely open. And so now I have the edge, hopefully you can see that here. If I have the edge of the racket, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm leading with the edge. And so if I lead with the edge now, you can see how the racket still gets left behind. And now though, if I'm leading with the edge and pulling my hand forward and slightly up, you can see how my racket is vertical, okay? So we, we're working that drill here, same thing, just working that motion, okay? You would do this a ton of times until it feels really comfortable for, me, for you. From here, what you could just now do is start doing drop dead balls. Now, if you wanna start here, totally fine. What I do recommend is just have your hand go back and forth and feel that hinge being loose enough so you feel that lag of the racket. And then from here, I would just go from here and pull. And you can see how I'm going pull, it gets in that position, I'm making contact, and then the racket can come around. And if you feel more comfortable after you do a couple of these, what you can start doing is closing the racket face down a little bit. Why we wanna do this is if we can close the racket face, we can be more aggressive coming through and up on the ball without the racket face opening up. Sometimes, if your racket's, let's say, vertical, and we start going up, there's a chance of it opening up, sending the ball long. And so when we close it now, and I relax, you can see I can create topspin and power, and I can keep speeding my body up, and that energy gets transferred down to the arm instead of being locked down because the arm is stiff and tight. And this is how you can start creating more power and looseness and freedom on your forehand. And you can do the same thing on your back end. If you want me to make a video showing you how to do this with your two-handed back end, let me know in the comments. But definitely go out and try this drill where you start learning to relax. So now when someone tells you to relax, it means something. It means letting the hinge relax. So now you can pull your hand through and it locks that ball on the racket without having to be stiff. If you want more videos on how to improve your game, I highly, highly recommend a brand new video I just came out with talking about footwork right here. This is the cheat code to your tennis game. If you're feeling like you're not improving, I bet a lot of the angst you're feeling about not improving is because you don't have great footwork. So go watch this video right here and it's gonna help you with that. Take care.